What's up everyone, it's Dakota, and welcome back to another modern video. This week we're going to be taking a look back on a deck that I covered very early on since coming back to my YouTube channel and uh, going on these in-depth deck techs. I think it's a deck that's worth looking back on for the fact that it, it's always at least a tier 1.5 to like a tier 1 deck. It's always popular, it puts up results, and on top of it, it's probably one of the most complicated decks that you could currently play in the modern format. So without further ado, let's take a deep dive and look back into the Amulet Titan deck for the modern format. So this is going to be the Amulet Titan deck that we kind of look over. Uh, second place in the modern challenge, 7 0 the Swiss, piloted by Varro. Um, but before we get too deep into the Amulet Titan deck and go over all the intricacies and the ins and outs of combos and all that sort of fun stuff that comes with these uh, Urza Saga slash like Titan decks, uh, I really appreciate it that if you have not already, uh, subscribe, to the, subscribe to the channel. Helps me out a lot. Uh, it's a free way and an easy way to support my content as well as uh, basically drive like the viewership and all that. To make this channel successful, um, I do this as like a hobby. It's it's fun for me, and uh, it does make me happy seeing the uh, new subscribers and stuff pop up like in my inbox and stuff like that. So that's really cool. So uh, yeah, like I said, if you haven't already, just subscribe to the channel really quickly. Helps me out a lot. Great stuff for the channel. Post multiple videos a week uh, with the added bonus of getting to do videos like this, where I just get to dive super deep uh, into decks, especially into formats that I really enjoy a lot. So uh, yeah, here we go with the Amulet Titan deck. Uh, very simple in what it wants to try to set up, but complex in how it accomplishes it. So it's called Amulet Titan for two reasons. Uh, half of it is for the card Amulet of Vigor that says whenever a permanent enters the battlefield tapped under your control, you untap it. Uh, important to know that this does trigger, it doesn't just happen. So uh, it comes up when you have multiple amulets in play that you get multiple triggers to untap, which you can generate a ton of mana with, uh, especially with like the what we call bounce lands in like Simith Growth, uh, Simic Growth Chamber and Selesnia Sanctuary. These come into play tap, they force you to return a land to their owner's hand, but then they can tap for their respective uh, guild colors. So with like two amulets in play, essentially a bounce land can make four mana um, and return itself, which if you have ways to make multiple land drops like you do with uh, Dryad and Azusa, uh, these bounce lands can generate tons of mana. You know, or if you have like an Azusa in play, you have three land drops, each one makes four mana, you end up having 12 mana, uh, six of one color, six of another color, uh, if you play like the same bounce land over and over again. Uh, the second part of Amulet Titan is, of course, Primeval Titan, which is a card that's kind of always been a problem for Modern uh, in the way that it just keeps showing up. Uh, it was very good when it was in Standard. And all it does is whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, you search for two land cards and put them onto the battlefield tapped. So this kind of sets you up for very like various different like combos and things that you can set up, um, things you can do with an Amulet of Vigor in play, and things that you don't normally get to do with an Amulet of Vigor in play. So uh, obviously the best case scenario is that you get to play an Amulet on turn one, and then eventually on like turn three or turn four, you get to slam a Titan into play. Now, if you have an Amulet in play, uh, most people normally get uh, Slayer Stronghold and Boros Garrison. Uh, Boros Garrison is the Boros Bounce Land, and Slayer Stronghold can tap. Uh, you pay Boros Colors and tap it, and you give the creature 2 0, and it gains Vigilance and Haste until end of turn. So, obviously, just getting those is kind of free. You get to bounce whatever land you want with the uh, Boros Garrison. Maybe you play like a utility land that you want to pick up, but. Um, in getting like that combination of cards, you get to attack with Titan, which basically means that you get to search for another mix of like lands. If you're playing against like some more aggressive decks, you might get a bounce land plus like a Radiant Fountain. Uh, you gain two life when the uh, Radiant Fountain comes into play, and then if you have other land drops, you just get to gain more life from it. Uh, if you get cards like say Simic Growth Chamber and Talaria West, Talaria West can transmute into a Summoner's Pact, which lets you search your library for a green creature, put it into your hand. You do have to pay four on your upkeep or you lose the game. A little less brutal nowadays than it was back in the day where if you just miss this, you automatically lose. Um, Summoner's Pact can basically set you up to get like Primeval Titans if you just want to cast more Titans, get more... Uh, triggers into play. Obviously, if you searched up the Slayer Stronghold Boros Garrison earlier, on the next turn you can um, 
go and eventually just go and grab like another titan uh with this primeval titan that you get from like summoner's pact and then just kind of keep like the chain going on top of being able to like pay for your uh pay for your uh summoner's packs because that card's hard to remember um it also gives you the ability to get cultivator colossus which basically says when it enters the battlefield you put a land from your hand onto the battlefield tapped and if you do draw a card and you get to repeat this process until you don't put a land into play um basically turning all of the lands in your hands and uh into spells well whether they're like extra copies of amulet they're more primeval titans or even like a dryad something like that you're very likely to find at least something like this in like a mix of like four or five lands or you can hit like a summoner's pact you know your second or third copy even like turn timber symbiosis does have the chance to find one especially after you draw you know in theory you know five ten cards at the very minimum five cards um the deck being able to play primeval titan and get to play like urza saga and get to tutor up like expedition map it does get some utility lands in the main deck that can go to your hand to kind of interact with your opponent uh, and that's kind of what we're going to go over now because the rest of the cards are uh pretty self-explanatory for the most part um dryad i guess i'll go over this real quick dryad in this deck allows for the titan deck to have like a win condition that is not just attacking with titans or cultivator colossuses and if you're able to keep a dryad in play and you get to play with valakut the moat and pinnacle which turns everything into a mountain so whenever you play your sixth land uh if you play like valakut is like your sixth land valakut will actually trigger itself to deal three damage to something um this of course makes like your primeval uh, future primeval titans more dangerous because they just get two lands they deal six to your opponent cultivator colossus can obviously dump all the lands that you draw uh, or that are already in your hand into play and shoot your opponent for a ton of damage or just blow, uh, blow up their board and then kill them with uh, the cultivator colossus via the slayer stronghold um boros garrison or like i said the uh valica triggers um, the utility lands that this deck gets to play, and again, like you have Expedition Map is like a one of that you can get from Urza Saga, and then this can let you tutor for something, um, or that you can just get with like Primeval Titan, is that a lot of these lands have synergies with the Bounce Lands, where if you can play this multiple times, uh, depending on the matchup, it's going to be very hard for them to beat, uh, except for the case like Beseju, which obviously just gets discarded and you blow something up. Um, this deck plays a Pachuca Bog, which exiles the graveyard when it comes into play. Um, gets to play like Castle Garen Brig. Not really a utility land in the way that Pachuca Bog is, but does allow you to cast Titans really quickly. Um, Radiant Fountain against like the super aggressive like slash like burn decks. Uh, you, there's a lot of times where you just play this card like uh, two, three, four times. And the amount of life that you gain from that is kind of hard for those decks to come back from, especially when you're putting on your own pressure as well. Uh, Sunhome gives a creature double strike. Uh, there is worlds where like you have multiple amulets in play that you can uh, give a Titan um, double like activate Slayer Stronghold multiple times to make your Titan a 10 power creature, and then you can go get like Vesuva and like another um, Vesuva and Sunhome, and then you can just make it have double strike, and you have a 20 20 power double striking uh, Vigilance like Titan. That if that doesn't win you the game, it gets you pretty dang close to winning, um, for sure. Um, Urza Saga is also just having the utility of going to find like amulets. Uh, you while you aren't playing like necessarily like a huge amount of like artifacts like uh, the hammer decks and some of the other like Urza Saga's deck, um, just getting to create like one or two constructs and then just having an amulet or two in play. That's two four fours, and those are, do uh, are pretty big and give you a lot of value from just a land that you get to play. Uh, in your deck and just get to like search for multiple copies of with like primeval titan of course vesuva just gives you a second copy of whatever land and of course uh with all these lands the vesuva the radiant fountain uh even like to an extent like the valakuts to like try to protect them and like the bog they all synergize well with like the simic growth chambers sanctuaries and things like that um in vesuva's case like getting to like bounce itself like with a bounce land to maybe like trigger a uh, Valakut if you don't have any more bounce lands in hand, but you do have some in play. Obviously giving you another copy of Bajuka Bog and your Radiant Fountains and the sort. 
you know, just a very good like utility land, just to have like a one of that you can copy some of your best lands uh, that you have in play. Um, and I believe, yeah, you just choose a land in play, so you could choose like your opponent's lands as well. Um, but, you know, it does offer a lot of utility. The sideboard, you have uh, Besaju's, uh, obviously, really just really good, uncounterable in a way um, to just deal with like artifacts, enchantments, or non basic lands. Um, people like to play like Enchantress and things like that. Um, obviously, more, probably more for like the hammer matchups and that. So, uh, definitely a good card to have like in the sideboard, access to multiple copies, uh, just for the number of ways that you can search for this card. Uh, Cavern of Souls it gives you the fourth uh, cavern in the sideboard. Uh, I'm not really sure how much. I mean, if you were look, looking to kind of change up the deck, make, maybe make it a little bit cheaper because it is uh, on the tad expensive side. Uh, cavern could be a cut, at least like this one in the sideboard, and you probably play a different like utility lane in the board if you really wanted to. Relic, you really don't care about your own graveyard, and it draws a card, and the graveyard deck that does hose, hoses pretty nicely. Also to, uh, tutorable with Urza Saga, which is really, really nice to have. Dismember is just essentially free removal um, in the matchups where, like, your life doesn't matter, but you want to kill some, like, bigger creatures. Dismember is going to uh, put in a lot of work for you in those matchups. Uh, Endurance, just to mess with, like, the graveyard decks, uh, like, namely, like, Yawgmoth and the... Um, living index, uh, just a way to beat them at like instant speed. Uh, most of your deck's green, so you're going to be able to cast this endurance a lot of time for free. Uh, there is also going to be times where you can just hard cast this thing on like turn two and just get to leave like a three or four body into play, depending on you know the matchups and the circumstances. Uh, Tyler's Tracker and Emrakul, two threats that can come in if you want to be uh, particularly grindy. Uh, Tyler's Tracker just eventually just stacking up tons of clues. And while you're cracking those clues, drawing more cards, hopefully drawing in a more gas, Tireless Tracker is getting bigger. Emrakul uh, just kind of gets the payoff from the fact that you are playing like uh, some a decent amount of different types. You know, you have like land, land enchantment. You're essentially sort of like tribal and planeswalker of just getting to cast this thing for the you know for five mana. But uh, casting Emrakul for eight, uh, seven or eight mana is not hard for this deck to do very early on, and can really mess with your opponent. Uh, finally, we get to the Force of Vigor, which is probably one of the best two for twos that you can get in Magic currently out of the sideboard. Uh, just in the matchups where this ends up being very, very good in, it, you almost never feel like it's a two for two. You almost feel like it's a two for one in your favor, if that makes sense. Obviously, you have to pitch a card to it, but the upside that you get from probably just blowing up whatever permanence that you just decide to blow up versus like whatever green card it is. Uh, short of like a Titan or like a Cultivator Colossus, uh, you feel like you win that exchange a lot of the time. And that's the aim of the Titan deck for Modern. Uh, this deck, I, I have a love-hate relationship with it because I've played it before. I've played it online. I've played it in paper. Definitely in paper, it's a lot to keep track of. Um, and while online, uh, it's a lot easier to keep track of because it just puts like your triggers on the stack and things like that. Um, there is just shortcuts that I find very convenient playing in paper that you don't get in an online just because of all the things that the client itself has to go through uh, when having you resolve triggers and stuff. Um, definitely a deck that's worth playing, a deck that definitely rewards you for format uh, familiarity plus deck familiarity as well. Um, and only seems to get better, like they're probably never going to ban Primeval Titan, Famous Last Words. Um, and the rest of the cards in the deck, I mean, unless you really get rid of Valakut, but like aside from like Dryad, really making Valakut very, very good in this deck, I, I don't see that happening, you know. Um, but like the deck always survives, like Field of the Dead was super popular. This deck survived that. Summer Bloom was very popular, survived that. Um, so definitely a good deck to pick up, uh, especially if you want to get into modern and just be able to play like a top deck in the format. Again, just rewards you for understanding the deck and really getting your reps in can really determine a lot of the times if you win or lose a matchup, uh, even if you're not very favored in said matchup. So that's going to do it for me in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed Amulet Titan for the modern format. Uh, if you did, leave a like on the video, comment down below what you would do to make this deck better. Maybe it's already 
perfectly fine or if you have any experience with the deck fun memories things like that go ahead leave those comments down in the comment section below and of course if you have not subscribed to the channel already please be sure to do that it's an easy way to support me and my channel and obviously i i try to post at least two to three videos a week hopefully getting to the point where i can do more with my schedule starting to calm down a little bit as we get uh deeper into 2021 hoping to reach 100 subscribers by the end of the year and at the pace we're going uh we might actually get that so yeah, that's uh that's it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed and I will see you all in the next one.